Anderson Cooper is keeping them honest. AC 360, CNN weeknights, 8 Eastern. Keeping them honest. Tonight we've got more secrets to share with you about the high cost of health care. What we're going to show you could save you money, possibly lots of money, the next time you get a bill from a hospital. We've partnered with Time Magazine. Time's special report is called Bitter Pill, Why Medical Bills Are Killing Us. Journalist Stephen Brill spent seven months investigating why medical bills in the United States are so high and what he found is jaw-dropping. Investigative correspondent Drew Griffin has been digging on our end, exploring how a lot of people are profiting from your high hospital bills, even the people who run hospitals that call themselves non-profit. So how are hospitals pulling in so much money? Oh, let us count the ways. Here's part two of Drew's report. Pat Palmer has built a business around helping patients fight hospital bills. She says in no other business are all the costs of doing business itemized and billed separately. You don't have a separate electricity bill added onto your grocery bill or a refrigeration bill charged separately when you buy ice cream. She argues if hotels ran their business like hospitals, you'd be charged for lying down on the bed. Absolutely. If we'd went to a hotel and they charge us for sheets and uh, towels, there would be a ruckus made over those kind of charges and uh, major issues. But yet we're letting the medical industry do this on a daily basis. Palmer says she's found hospitals billing for everything from tissues to little white cups that hold aspirins. Everything has a charge. The bills, sometimes hundreds of pages long, have hidden codes or names. Stephen Brill, writing a special report for Time magazine, says he makes just one conclusion. Hospitals want to prevent patients from knowing what they are paying for, all in an attempt to charge as much as they can get away with. I defy you to take any hospital bill anywhere around the country, and everybody watching this program knows this, and try to read that bill and try to understand what it says and what the prices actually are, let alone what the prices are based on. I mean, it is the, the opposite of transparency. But not everyone, of course, is feeling that pinch. In the world of nonprofit hospitals, some people are making a small fortune. Public records show CEOs of top billing hospitals across the U.S. can garner salaries, deferred compensation, and other revenues that rival CEOs of major for profit businesses. Just take a look at this list put together by a Healthcare Business Journal's review of. 2010 and 2011 tax filings, which showed CEOs of top grossing nonprofit hospitals making multi million dollar figures. Watch as the numbers get bigger. The top salary paid in 2010 Dean Harrison, chief administrator of the prestigious Northwestern Memorial Hospital in Chicago. His salary and one time bonus earned him a whopping $9.7 million dollars. When we asked about these high salaries and high hospital bills, the American Hospital Association sent us to Taylor, Michigan and to Malcolm Hennock, Chief Medical Officer for Oakwood Healthcare System. But even he didn't want to talk about hospital executive salaries. He was willing, though, to discuss hospital billing. Here, the hospital says it tries to work with patients to understand their bills. The information we provide is not perfect. It doesn't disclose everything. Uh, and it's not, for everyone, e always easily understandable. But it's a start. And I think this notion of transparency in health care is important. Hanock admits billing at hospitals can be confusing. But he defends the process by noting the cost of, say, a simple blood draw. Has lots of costs that patients don't see. The cost of that is not just the cost of that vial, but a cost of a technician who pro processes that sample, a cost, a fraction of the cost of that uh, individual who's drawn that blood from you, a fraction of the cost of that equipment that analyzes that blood sample, a fraction of the cost of that uh, electronic laboratory information system that we need to collect and store and disseminate that information to the physician, to the nurse, perhaps to a number of physicians not even practicing at the hospital. Which is why some people may be billed up to $200 just for a warm blanket.
It is, in fact, all up for negotiation. If you are insured, your insurance company does the negotiating. If you're on Medicare, the government negotiates. If you are paying out of pocket, then the hospitals, paying those million-dollar salaries, determine just how much you will pay, your wealth or your health. And here is a staggering figure about just how much money we are talking about here, Jake. Time magazine reports Americans will spend $2.8 trillion on health care this year. Per person, that's 27% more than other developed nations spend on health care. And hospitals are getting a lot of that money. And Drew, as you reported last night, while there are some measures to try to control health care costs in Obamacare, there's nothing that seems to effectively address these specific runaway costs in hospital billing fees. Is there any support in Washington to try and drive these costs down? You know, let me, let me put this in perspective for you. And Jake, you certainly know how that town, Washington, works. This is also in Time Magazine's special edition. According to the Center for Responsive Politics, since 1998, the healthcare and drug industry, including doctors and hospitals, have spent $5.36 billion lobbying in Washington. That is nearly double what was spent by the defense industry and the oil and gas industry combined. So people who make money in health care certainly have the government's ear, and I might add, they have our pockets. Indeed. True Griffin, thanks.